My name is Dale Vince. I'm the founder of Ecotricity. I've set myself a challenge. I'm going to build a wind-powered car. It'll be an electric car charged from the wind, so there's zero emissions from it. I want to build a sports car, out-and-out -out sports car. That's the challenge, a wind-powered car. We're probably a third of the way through the programme. It's probably a 30-week project, and we're in week 10. Dale's going to be here this afternoon to look at the car. It's a nice opportunity for him to see where we've got to. We've been doing detailed design work on transmission. We've done some work lengthening the tail and smoothing out the body to the rear to improve the aerodynamic uh, efficiency of it, really. As always, there's a, a long lull and then suddenly lots of pieces of the jigsaw start to fit together. I had been sending Photoshop images to Dale, and that's an interesting and tricky way to communicate because it's a 2D image of what's absolutely crucially a 3D object. Um, so Dale's had some opinions on it. The back was looking a bit long and a bit kind of, a bit nerdy for my liking, you know. He got that, he picked it up, changed it, you know. We've got to make a car that really looks the part. I hadn't at first appreciated how tough Dale wanted it still to look. You know, there's a way of making an electric vehicle look terribly efficient and slippery and you risk dull actually as well and it's plainly clear that Dale certainly doesn't want dull. So I've tried to get the same aero advantages whilst having something that looks, it's definitely much more in your face. Back end's looking really special, looking less and less like an Exige and it's not all cosmetic. There's a, another piece of bodywork behind the rear wheel, which is something we'll take to the wind tunnel and tune. It's a complex duct that manages the last bit of the airflow because that air that leaves the back of the car is what essentially finally reduces the drag. We're changing the look uh, for functional reasons, uh, trying to retain a, a good overall look to the car, but we're also getting lower drag from it at the same time. We can see if we can ease a few more miles out of the, out of the range through to uh, design for drag. From his point of view, everybody's going to draw comparisons with the Tesla. The idea is make an electric car, do it with bits that exist in the world, rather than try to invent something and say to the big car companies, come on guys, what on earth are you playing at? You know, I mean, they, they fob us off with the idea that we've got to wait 10 years for fuel cells and all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, and that's just bollocks really, you know. And it's because they've got a vested interest in, inter in the internal combustion engine. There'll be lots of comparisons about how far does it go and that sort of thing. But that's like comparing a Jaguar with a Mini. It depends how big the fuel tank is, is how far it goes. The oil companies are pushing for us to have hydrogen to run our cars in a hydrogen economy because they make that at their refineries and they can ship it in their tankers and put it in their garages and it's business as usual. And um, we think that's all, uh, you know, the wrong way to go. Hydrogen cars do one-third the miles to any given unit of energy that an electric car will, for example. So, you know, they're the new gas guzzlers. So, you know, we've got to take the 250 billion miles a year that we drive in the UK and we've got to f power it renewably. If you do it with hydrogen, you just make the job three times harder. The difficulty with a project like this is that the customer wants his car quite understandably and wants to pay for his car in a fair way. What we don't know as engineers is how much development is required in a brand new design like this to get to a car that the customer is going to be happy with. We're very deadline driven and very often if, if you're not careful, if you just aim at the deadline, the money goes out the window. We're conscious that you know, he really wants one car, he doesn't want to pay for a 10 year development program in two electric vehicles. So we have to be very disciplined in coming to a workable solution which doesn't, which carries a minimal risk but is also the best solution for that particular problem. We're mindful of the money basically and we don't want to, to waste Dale's money going down the wrong, the wrong avenue. He's a good listener and he's a good, un, you know, good one for understanding what we're trying to do in the whole efficiency of it. You know, they're a great team. They are the A team of cars. It's great to sit and talk to them and you know, play with the CAD with Jim and say, well, why don't we just drop that down there? There's a gap down there, you know. Great talking to Peter about the body and stuff, you know, it's just fab. Yeah. 
who, who could not be happy? Don't know what we're going to call it. The name's up in the air for sure. We've had a lot of ideas from uh, people on our blog site. We're still open to suggestions because the decision's not been made. Our car would be very special. Very, very special. Nothing like Tesla. <laughs>